Hi there, Blaze here and in today's tutorial we're gonna create safe system in our Godot project. One quick info before we start, this system is mainly focused on saving some values to the file, like for example player level, player experience, but this system is not good to use with some dynamic words or in some games where you build your city. If you want to create a safe system for words, for a dynamically loaded content, you will need to do some tweaks in the system or you need to wait for another tutorial because I want to create a tutorial for a word saving system somewhere in the future. Okay, so let's start with creating a project. Let's name it Safe System Tutorial and let's do this with the renderer mobile. It doesn't really matter. And let's switch to the 2D view. And before we start, I want to show you how we want to implement the logic of this safe system. So let's switch to the whiteboard and see you later. I want to show you how we'll be creating Safe System today. Okay, so let's assume we have a player which is node 2D somewhere on our scene. And we also have some enemies. And maybe we also have something like our base in which we want to store some things like inventory, for example, chests or something. Uh, let's write this as the base. Okay, so here we have player and base and they have a values we want to store in the save. And here are the enemies and we don't care about their values because we don't want to save values from them. We will get values from this using groups. So we will add the player and the base to the group. Let's call it save data. And the thing we don't want in this implementation is global save data object and the auto loads. So we don't want the auto load because we want to create single save manager and we don't want the global save data object because we want to push our save into our save data objects. And somewhere here we have also file in the format of JSON. So what we want to do is implement in the save manager two functions, save and load. And when we will be saving, we want to get all the objects inside this group get the values from them and save them to the file. When we want to load, we want to get entire file. Then we want to get again all the objects inside save data group and then load the values from the file, uh, which are currently cached in the memory inside these objects. And what are the pros of this method? We don't need this global save data, as I said before, and we don't need auto load because we can put save manager inside node named game, for example. And we can call the load and so save methods from the game. Save manager will only handle the logic. But there are also some cons. For example, this player and base need to be on scene when the load is called. And they also need to be on the scene when the save is called. Okay, so now we are ready to start. Let's start with creating the game node, which, which will be the main node in our entire project. Let's create other node and let's create just a node. We don't need node 2D because this game don't need to be placed somewhere in the space. We just want to have node and let's create the node. Let's rename it to the game. We can now save this node and let's attach the script. Let's call it the game.gd. Let's inherit from the node and template node default create. Okay, save this and we will be back here later. Now let's create a child node of the type node also and let's name it save system. And we also can attach the script for this. Let's name this save system.gd. We will inherit from the node. Let's create this and we will be back here later. Let's create the last child. Now this will be the node 2D. Rename it to the player and the player will be the object uh, which values we want to store in the save. You can also create other objects. In introduction I said about the base. You can also create some enemies which will be nodes uh, that we don't want to store the values from. This will be the empty node but I will just show you what will be the difference and also let's attach the script to the player. Let's call it player and we want to inherit from from node 2D. Okay, so let's start with the player. We want to have some values which we can store in the save file. So let's say we have the variable health of type int and our player have five healths. We can also export this so we can change this from the inspector. And let's say our player will also have a speed variable of the type float and we will start with 1.0. It doesn't matter which variables I will write here. I just want to 
show you how to save this variable and how to load them later. Okay, now we need to implement the save and load logic and we will do this in the save system. So let's remove these functions. We will not need them. We will create two functions, save game and load game. And a good thing to have at the beginning of this class is constant string with the path to the save file. So if we want to change the path somewhere in the future, we can just change this contents and we can uh, also made it as a variable and change it somewhere from the script. I will call it the file path and this is a string type and I want to save this file in the user location. User location depending on your system can be somewhere in the app data or libraries on Max. Let's go with user and remember that you should not write your saves in the resource folder because resources are used in the editor and resource folders shouldn't be used for the saves. Let's uh, name this file data.save. This will be uh, our save file. Okay so let's start with implementation we will start with saving it's probably easier we need to access this file so we need to write to the variable the file access that open function this will open the file and we need to specify the path our file path from the constant and we need to specify how we want to open this file we will go with write so file access that write and this will open this file in the save file variable now we need to get all the nodes from the scene from which we want to get the values to the save this can be a little strange if you don't watch the introduction but if you watch you will probably know that we want to get all the objects by the group and the group will be named save data and all these nodes we will save in save nodes variable to get the nodes we need to get the tree and get nodes in group and the group is named save data now what is this group this group will contain all the elements we want to save so let's go to the player select it and here next to the inspector we have a node tab click on it click on groups and add save data group when you add the player to the save data group you will have this square with circle here and if you hover over this you will see that this node is in the group save data this enemy node for example is not in the save data group because we don't want to store the values from this node. If you will have other nodes which values you want to save, for example this base made earlier, you also just add it to the group save data and you will also need to implement the save and load logic the same way as we go with the player. But let's delay this to not overcomplicate it and let's back to our save system. So when we have our save nodes, we will also need a dictionary which will be stored in the file because we will store the file as a JSON and the JSON is built on the something that we can call a dictionary because you have keys and values so we need a main dictionary for the entire save and i will call this the json data this will be the type of the dictionary we can specify this type because it will be easier later in the future to access some properties or functions but you can also just write this this way and it will be shorter now we want to access every node from the save nodes variable so we will use the for loop so for every node inside save nodes we want to first check if it has a method to save data because if it don't have a method we will print an error so we can easier find bugs if we set the group for some node but don't implement the logic so let's go with if node has a method and we will call this method save data this is not the same save data as the group save data this is just a method name you can also name it just a save and the same for load you can use load data or load but because load is used to load some package scenes in the godot this is an alias for the resource loader I want to avoid the conflicts. This is because I named it save data and load data. And this is only the example. You can go with the method name you like. You can name it to file and from file. Doesn't matter. So if our node doesn't have this method, we want to print an error. And let's say node. Here will be the name. is missing a save function. And we will use note that name and we also want to continue the loop so the rest of the code will not be executed this if isn't necessary but it can be helpful in bigger projects so think about implementing it what we need to do to save this is merge our json data which at the beginning is an empty dictionary merge it with the response of the save data function call it on the node i will explain this in a while but uh, for now just let's write the node call and let's call this save data 
function. So we need to merge these uh, dictionaries for the all nodes, which are in the save nodes. And at the beginning, when our JSON data dictionary is full of data, we can save it to the file by using save file that store line, and we will stringify using JSON variable JSON data. Okay, so here is the implementation of the save. Now let's go with the load, and this will be more tricky. At the beginning, we need to check if the file exists, because when we run the game for the first time, the save file will not exist. And we need to handle this because uh, if we want to read the file that doesn't exist, uh, we will have an error and we will be not able to uh, run the game. So let's check if the file exists. We file access that file exists and let's specify the path. The path is the file path variable. And if the file is not exist, you can write an error here save file not exist but this is not the case what you want to do is return from this function so nothing will be loaded all these nodes will use the default values uh, set it somewhere so for example to the player it will be the health 5 and speed 1.0 okay after this we know that file exists in this code scope so let's access this file so variable save file and file access that open but now instead of using file access that write we will need file access that read and we also need to get all the nodes which are inside the save data group all the nodes where you want to call the method load data need to be instantiated on the scene before you call the load game. I will show you how to be sure that all of them are loaded later in this video, but just remember that if you will load the game and then, for example, instantiate or load the player using dynamically loading, you will need to load the game again because you will need to load the values to the missing objects. So just be aware about this and remember the order of execution. Okay, now we want to our file i will go with while loop which will check if we are not at the end of the file and we do this by checking the position if the position is no more than the length of the file and how to load it we will load this to the json string because this will be the string get from the file and we do this by accessing save file and getting the line now let's create also the empty json and we want to parse this uh, json string to the json object we do this by calling the json variable that parse and putting json string as an argument but to avoid some errors you can also check if this is parsed successfully so let's check this with the if not and if not because we will compare this to the okay so if not okay if parsing is not okay we will display an error and let's go with the standard message we can get an error message from the json object and we can also write which line caused the error using json that get error line but that doesn't matter what you need to do is continue and this is what will force the while loop to switch to the next line so for example if the first line will be broken and the parsing is not correct you will just switch to the next line okay so when we are here we know that our save file is loaded we know that we parsed our json string to the json object and we know that this parsing is correct so we can just get the data and we will get this to the json data which will be the type of dictionary of course and we do this by using json that get data now in the json data dictionary variable we have the data in the dictionary and now because we don't want to use this json data as the global scope object of course you can do some tweaks to this code and use it as a global but because i don't want to use it as a global i want to call all the nodes we get here in the save nodes so again we go with the for node in save nodes i want to call the function named load data and as an argument we will push this json data dictionary and it will be good if we will check if this node have the load data function same method as we do this here so if node doesn't have a load data method we can display an error and continue if node has this method it will be called so this is the entire logic of handling the saving and loading from the and to the file we can now close the save system that gd we will not edit this let's close this and we need to run this somewhere so let's switch to the game remove the process function i don't need it but i will need a ready function and before we start you need to know when this ready is called because this game that gd script is attached to the game node you will need to know that this game will be initialized then all these childs will be initialized and all these childs will call their ready functions and when all these nodes are ready we will back to the game node and then the game node ready function will be called so calling 
the load data. In this place, we of course need to call this by save system. You can export this also, but don't over complicate this tutorial. You will be sure that all these child nodes are created, instantiated and ready and they are waiting for the parent to be ready also. So then the parent is ready and ready parent call the load data to the uh, ready nodes. So yeah, this place will be good to use this load data. But uh, when you want to call the save data, let's create a function called dash notification with the parameter what and let's check if the game is closed. So we want to save the game when player quit the game. So we will receive the notification and this notification is notification close request. So you just need to compare the what parameter with this but if you are on the mobile device on android you need to check also something else so we go with or and we need to compare the what with notification go bug request and if this is called we want to call the save game function from our save system and that's all when it comes to the game gd we can close this script now let's set the game node as a mine scene load this let's open the output window because we will have some errors here so i want to show you this Oops. I have mistake here. This uh, should be load game, not load data. Sorry. I'll close this and run again. Okay. So here we are. Save file not exist. That's okay because it really not exists. And when we run and quit this game, we will have a notification that node player is missing a save and load functions. This is because we not implement this. So we need to do this now. Let's go to the player.gd script and let's create a function called save data, which will return the dictionary. And we want to return a dictionary. So let's go with returning and let's open the curly brackets and we want to store the health and the speed. First, we need to specify the key. I will suggest to use the node name that the health. So you will be sure that this is from the node player and this is a variable called health. But you can go with whatever you want because this dictionary will be just stored to the file and you can just read and uh, write what you want. Let's uh, assign the health and also let's save the speed and let's assign the speed for this. We also also need to implement the load data function. This need a dictionary as an argument call it for example data type is dictionary and we will get the dictionary with these variables and with some other variables from the uh, others nodes but because we written this in the notation layer dot health we just know that we need to get uh, these specific keys from the dictionary and let's assign this to the health and we can use the data and the name of the key will be player health and similar to speed player dot speed let's save this let's start the game we've got an error that the player health key is not exist and that's right we should check here if the data has this key player health and the same for speed now let's play the game load is okay let's quit the game and check if this file is saved correctly here we have our data that save and when we open this with the text edit we will see that we have a json here this json is in one line and i will not recommend to split this to the other lines i can show you how this is structured but i will not save this because this will break our system if we split this to the multiple lines so this is how it looks now let's for example change the health to 10 and the speed to the 2.5 let's remove this formatting and now save this file now let's go to the godot and start the game our scene is loaded and let's go to the remote to see if the values are loaded correctly let's go to the game player and in the inspector you can see that we have loaded health as 10 and speed as 2.5 so this is the values we get from our file and that means that the saving and loading is working correctly okay so that's all for today hope this will help you creating your safe systems in your game hit the thumbs up if you like the video let me know in the comment section which tutorial i should prepare next and see you soon in the another video bye